and welcome to Brendan's Car Talk, number, I don't know the number, but season four, episode 16, for Monday, March 21st, 2022. That's the year. Uh, remember to subscribe or comment down below for a little more engagement. I can reply to you guys and anyone else watching in the future or listening to the podcast can see that discourse too. Because if you have any questions or comments, if you're for or against it, you agree, you disagree with me, put it down there. Because if you're thinking that there's someone else that does too. 7.8 billion people in the world, we're all unique, but at the same time, most of the thoughts and feelings are not that, I don't want to say special, we're all special for the fact that we're not dead, but it's not that someone else doesn't have that thought. One in a million is 7,800 people. That's a fucking basketball arena. Uh, also, consider checking out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Brendan Seed to get videos early and podcast versions, daily podcasts, Zoom events, and shoutouts in the credits. Uh, or every video, like, and this is where I shout out the meal tier patrons. I actually have that here. Uh, thank you very much, Gimpy, Uncle Bobby B, Tommy Richardson, Morgan and Mama Thomas, Brian, the Pizza Man, Watson, Eric Thomas, and Rob Arbeck. Uh, coming up this week, I will not. This weekend, I will not be wrestling. I actually have this weekend off, but please go check out some local wrestling, music, live events, or spend quality time with your loved ones, related or chosen. Uh, but upcoming wrestling events after this date, Friday, April 1st, I return to Oshawa, Ontario. Saturday, April April 9th, I'll be back in Barrie, Ontario for Barry Wrestling. Saturday, April 16th, Cambridge, Ontario for Crossbody Pro Wrestling. And later in the month, I'll be back in Ottawa, I'll be back in Montreal, and I'll be returning for the first time since February 2020 to Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. So be sure to keep an eye on my socials to check out where and when I will be there. Uh, and you can do that by following me at Holden Pro on Twitter and Instagram, where I host an Instagram Live every Monday night at 7.15, where you can be a guest and featured and appear in the stream if you're a patron member, a uh, Patreon member. All other links are down below in the comment section, etc., etc., etc. Uh, Patreon.com slash Brendan C. Consider becoming an accolade of Albright today uh, because there's some fun Patreon events. Uh, we got some Zoom events coming up tonight. If you're watching this on Monday, we're playing Jackbox at 8 p.m. Do the Instagram Live 7, 745, and then uh, hop on to Zoom and just play Jackbox for a little bit. Next Sunday, we'll be watching ECW Living Dangerously 1999, and then next Monday, we'll be having the promo contest where one of my patrons is going to train for four months to wrestle me in December. So if your dream was to become a professional wrestler and you believe in yourself enough, join the promo contest. Cut a promo. It's one minute. It's way harder than you think it is. And it's fun. It's a great community. That's why Brian Watson is the pizza man. Um, deadline for those also is this Thursday night at midnight. Uh, this week this week was a decent week. Trained on Tuesday. Coach. Didn't train. Coached on Tuesday. Fun promo class. I, like... So Razor Ramon passed away last Monday night, and I feel like everyone was so sad and, like, appreciating him. And, like, it's one of those stories of conquering your demons, as wrestling likes to call them. And literally, like, he was the butt of the joke before 2014, 2013. And then DDP saved his life. He turned it around. Uh, he used to be, like, drunk, and, like, unfortunately it was alcohol abuse. Um... Uh, black coffee i'm outside the laundromat right now but in the last seven years eight years he turned his life around and he became a positive force everyone has great stories of razor and he's one of the guys that's like people thought he was an asshole because he considered the wrestling business the business part the promoters all the fucking top executives always considered it a business and the wrestlers had the addiction to wanting to be a wrestler wanting to be a superstar wanting to be that entertainer and they got taken advantage of. I learned when I was learning magic, and I was telling someone recently, it's really fucked up that I learned more about business and magic when I just wanted to perform magic tricks at my elementary school than I did in wrestling school. Uh, they called it show business, little show, big business. Business is not about shaking hands and walking on eggshells and setting up the rings. It's about making money. And if you're talented, you make money. If you tell someone you're worth this much, you better fucking be worth that goddamn much. Uh, on the flip side of it, I'm, I'm a dude that believes in paying your dues. If you're not booked on a show, set up the fucking ring. But it's not because you're less than the wrestlers on the show. Fuck, when I'm on the show and there's not enough people signed up the ring, I'll set up and tear down the ring. 
It's about being a decent fucking human, but I see it as a bartering system. If you don't want to pay that $15 or $30 for the ticket, then set up the ring. Also, I feel weird of like, I think only wrestlers and wrestling trainees and people on the inside should set up. I don't think fans should be setting up the rings. Like, it's weird. Like, be on the street team, get free tickets that way. Sign up the ring, though, that's like, don't look at the smoke and mirrors and how it's placed and the black art. If you know magic, you know what black art is. Like, that's, I think that's my mind now. You'll get free tickets for the street team, but if you're just a fan and you're not learning how to wrestle, you shouldn't know our secrets. That kind of makes sense for people. I don't know. Also, if you're on my Patreon, I, like, ruined the whole business. I, I just did a damn near three-hour podcast with Gabriel Fuerza where we broke down... We didn't watch back our 60-minute match, but we broke down our thought process and how we felt in there and, like, how much was planned, how much wasn't planned, what we didn't do, what our finish was supposed to be. It's very enjoyable. I I bear my soul there. Uh, if you join that caffeine tier, the caffeine tier is going to be going up in price because uh, I'm going to introduce a lower price where you'll get the car talk as a podcast. You'll get the daily podcast, and this is Brendan as early episodes. So I highly recommend, if you enjoy these car talks, you will love my Patreon. There's so much stuff there, especially in the Zoom calls. Uh, the Zoom calls that aren't recorded, like the watch-alongs and uh, the game night, ask me anything you fucking want. I am off limits. I've I've done podcasts on people that have heat with me, people I won't be on shows with. It's well worth it. I call it the Ontario Indie Dirt Sheets. <laughs> um, but today I want to talk about motivations. So, what you see online, no matter who it is, it's not the full person. The only way that you know that... You can't. Because no matter what, people are not saying what they're thinking. They're not saying that they want to fuck that person. They're not saying the disgusting kinks and stuff. By the way, if there's consentful, no one's getting hurt. Or it's, it's consenting pain, like wrestling or s and <laughs> It's always sexual with me. What the fuck? Uh, what's it called? Like... What the fuck? You're not going to see it online because online is still a little PG-13 and people aren't going to post all their thoughts. People are going to post like some negativity and shit. But yet because someone doesn't post their losses, it doesn't mean they don't have losses. I'm, I'm a big proponent on don't post your L's because you'll feel like a loser if people are only giving you sympathy. Like I was just talking to someone that early on in the pandemic, like year one pandemic, volume one. Uh, I had to get like three x-rays and an MRI on my neck. I, My cat ran away. I got into two car accidents. And if I only posted all that, it was going to be woe is me, woe is me. But the stuff I post, and here's the secret. I'm not posting for anyone but myself. Maybe it's a little selfish, but I'm talking to that. That 12-year-old Brendan is talking to me, telling me what the fuck I wanted to do, the dreams, the aspirations that I get to fucking do, the fact that I get to entertain people. <coughs> Oh, sorry about that. Like, I get to, that little voice gets to talk to me, and then, um, you see, there's cycles in life. A lot of people, in the winter, there's lack, lack of vitamin D, lack of sunlight, you're going to be more likely to be depressed. And if every fucking December 5th you're depressed because your grandma died or your wife died, you should know December 5th is going to be a bad day for you. Maybe that's the day you delete social media. Maybe that's the day you don't go to work. Maybe that's the day you just sleep in your bed all night. Maybe that's the day you only think about the memories of your loved one. But be prepared for that. Don't act surprised. December 5th comes around every fucking year. But, so when I'm posting stuff, I'm trying to motivate myself. And if you're trying to motivate yourself, I'm a big believer of, or I heard someone say, an entertainer is someone that chose to take control of their entertainment. And that's a, the wrestling I do is the wrestling I enjoy watching. So if I'm a fan watching Holden Albright, I would love that. And also because I have to watch my shit back to like enjoy uh, to match study and get better. I don't want to be wrestling like someone I don't fucking like. I already like. I don't hate myself most of the time, but so many people have treated me with such uh, lack of self worth that I've believed them, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, so I believe you also need that purpose greater than yourself. The reason I do wrestling, the reason I do stand-up, the reason I do videos and podcasts is because I'm a fan of it. 
when I was a kid and my house is being foreclosed on and my mom and dad are abusing each other and I'm being abused and there's no food in the fridge some days and I'm going to school with dirty clothes. I did a long ass podcast on the meal tier of all these traumatic events. I'm now like almost 30 and able to accept that. Like I, that used to be my thing. I never used to tell anyone that my house got foreclosed on. It wasn't my fault the house fucking got foreclosed on. I was nine. But there's all these like little things that I was so ashamed of. But no matter what, Monday Night Raw was there. I had a black box, so I was watching the pay-per-views on the Sunday. Stand-up comedy. I love John Panette. I love Mitch Hedberg. My dad introduced me to Funny 820 on AM radio stations. I found podcasts like super early. I remember listening to radio shows. I think there was like Don Castle and Vinny or Brian or something like that. It wasn't like Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And they had their show, like, Monday nights at 11 p.m. And I enjoyed listening to that. And then I found, like, friends on Facebook. Like, I'm a firm believer, you can't be an outcast. After the year 2005, you're not allowed to be an outcast. You just have to work harder to find your community, find your tribe. Because there's fucking forums for everything. There's forums for illegal shit. There's forums for weird anime shit. Whatever you're into. Just because you think you're the only one in your school that doesn't like that. The, you're the only one at your workplace. or You're the only one in your family. Maybe your best friend doesn't live in your city. Maybe your best friend doesn't live in your country. But you get on that forum and your motherfucking dude is in France. You just need to figure out the time zones and you have video chat. And 2022 is awesome. I got, because of magic and playing Burnout Paradise on PS3 in 2008, I didn't have that many friends in high school. I wouldn't even say I had real friends in high school. I had friends in elementary school. We were children. We're all nice to each other. But high school, I, I never went to one high school party. I never dated in high school. I... I think I went to two dances, but I was on the student activity council. And this is like, I a lot of people could say what the fuck I'm saying right now, but they use it as excuses and woe is me and I'm a piece of shit because I didn't experience that. Yeah, I watch like high school TV shows and movies and I, I feel like a part of me is missing. Like I didn't get these experiences as a kid, but I can't fucking do anything about it now. Even if I got in a time machine and I went back to Central Peel Secondary School in 2008... I'm 30-year-old Brendan now. I'm not going to be that Brendan. And then what if that Brendan does end up having sex and dates people and gets into drug abuse and shit like that? I don't have children right now. I don't have a spouse. I don't have chemical dependencies. And I'm grateful for that. I've, I've come to terms with I don't think I'm going to have children because my life is a little selfish. But my life is selfish so I can entertain other people. Because I want to provide that happiness that I was provided when I was younger. And that's why I'm so thankful that other people believe my bullshit and they enjoy it. And they're on the Patreon. They get so much out of it. For as little as like 7 10 Fuck, people pay $75 a month. And I'm so thankful for you guys. Fuck, some of you have traveled to Edmonton and fucking are coming out to New Brunswick in a few months. Like, that's fucking crazy to me. I'm just a fucking dude. Thank you so much. Like, you, I can't even have self-worth issues anymore because I just look at my Patreon and I see you guys are. You guys are literally tipping me and enjoying the fucking content. Thank you so fucking much. I, there, I have so much to be grateful for from just being able to breathe, being able to live out my dream, being able to walk, being able to fucking... I wish I had better hair, <laughs> but I'm glad I have a good head that when it's bald, it looks all right. Like... There is so much good going for me, and not everyone's as fucking fortunate as me. Not everyone is as fortunate to be able to contribute to a Patreon and put money. They need, they pay paycheck to paycheck. They have chemical balances. They have children. There's so many things that I'm so lucky. And that's the thing, too. It's luck. It's not... This wasn't fucking destined for me. I had to make it fucking work. And... That's like my why. My why is to entertain other fucking people, to give them that motivation to get out of bed every day. If you need someone to tell you, don't be a fucking bitch, you can get over this, I'll be that guy. If you need that person to cry and just be an ear for you, yeah, but if you're going to tell me some bullshit of why life isn't fair or something, I'm going to tell you, yeah, life isn't fair. It isn't fair that we're breathing and people are dead. It's not fair that we don't have cancer and other people have cancer. Like, there's Justin Zane who went through a bunch of colon surgeries in October, and he's such a good dude, and it's like he conquered it, and good job on him. He's able, he's coming out to wrestling events, and awesome. Jeremy's fucking hilarious. Jared the Bear is the little kid fucking who's hitting on Morgan, the female patron from North Carolina. It's crazy. Oh. 
There's a quote that I heard of, if your why is strong enough, the how will reveal itself. And that is where, in wrestling, people used to say, if you're in this business to make money, you're in the wrong business, but that's bullshit. Just because you couldn't make money doesn't mean no one else can. In 2022, we have Patreon, we have YouTube, we have Pro Wrestling Tees, we have merch, we have bookings. In Ontario, there's so many fucking shows. If you're not wrestling, okay, 2019, right now we're still, but if you're not wrestling more than once a month, you're not trying. You're, you're not a wrestler, in my opinion. You're, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can be a monthly warrior, not even a weekend warrior. But, but unfortunately for me, like, because I am so grateful, I need to like set those goals and shit. And it's finding that positivity and the negativity. For instance, there was a pro wrestler that was one of the. If you're in this business to make money, you're in the wrong business. I did all the drive. I did all the seminar. It never worked for me. And then. He called me a derogatory term three times, but not as a joke. Because I'll call myself dumb or stupid or slow. But I'm not. I didn't graduate high school, but I read and I can write and I am I can fucking articulate my words. Yeah, I swear a little too much. I don't like that, which is why I try not to swear specifically on Facebook. But my idea with him was, well, not with him, it was just Shane Sabre. We were having a discussion. I'm like, who do you think the top 10 guys in Ontario are? And we counted them. And I wanted to be a top 10 wrestler in Ontario. And I became like a really fucking good wrestler. And it was all out of spite. I'm motivated by spite. If someone tells me I can't fucking do something, I'm going to fucking do it. And then I'm going to outkick my coverage. I'm not even a sports guy, but I understand that metaphor. And it is in that weird thing. So recently, I, I didn't even disrespect a person. Someone didn't like the decisions I made, which didn't affect them at all but because they have a little more time in the game than I do, they felt the need to tell me what I did was wrong. And there's a way to have a conversation without a confrontation. There's a way to have a debate and a discussion without going into an argument. If you just send a hateful message and don't read a reply and block that person, you're showing to them, I don't give a fuck about you. And I'm the type of person, my only real addiction is people. If you're in my life, I'm for you. If you start fucking with me and you're draining my energy, you are not worth my fucking time. My time has value. Uh, there are fans, I'm one of the few guys that will reply to things. I'll reply to messages. I will answer phone calls. But at a certain point, I'm going to direct you towards my Patreon. At a certain point, I'm not going to reply to your messages anymore. If you're dancing around the same thing, there is a different connectivity. In 2022, friends, coworkers. Uh, acquaintances, best friends, lovers, they're all blurring together and like you need to set those boundaries. And fortunately for me, this shit happened. And I've even explained to the other people and they've been disappointed with the other guy. It wasn't even a, oh, uh, like we see his point, but in 2022 it's null and void. And when people look at me, they think I'm fake because there's so many other people that act like me that are fake. There are the people that are pro-women's rights, pro-inclusion, uh, but they're the same motherfuckers that go, well, I don't, I don't want to be racist, but, and then they say it, and it's like, motherfucker, you're just a racist. Oh, well, yay, women's rights, women's equality, and then they're abusing people. And because of all of those nine out of ten people are pieces of shit, people start thinking everyone's a piece of shit. And it's, that's the difficulty, is figuring out how to not be a piece of shit. If nine people in the room are a piece of shit, try not to do it. It's fucking hard, but you have to not succumb to that. And you have to believe in yourself. So the next 12 months, that's why I'm pushing the Patreon really hard, is I'm focusing on January 7th, I'm not working at my job anymore. I'm going to be focusing on creating content. I'm going to be focusing on wrestling all over the fucking world. For the first six weeks of next year, I'm going to be stationed in Europe. I'm not exactly sure where, but I'm putting it into... Uh, plan. I've blocked out every three months, basically every quarter of like different goals and such, so that by Mania Weekend next year for indie wrestling, I want to be a top guy there. I want to be like, oh fuck, who is this guy? And at that point, I've been doing it for nine years. They're not getting year one Holden Albright. They're not even getting year five Holden Albright. They're getting year nine. They're getting Coach Albright, who coaches two classes a week in Ontario. They're getting... Holden Albright that's willing to wrestle 65 minutes, willing to wrestle 90 minutes, willing to wrestle a hardcore death match, willing to wrestle a technical match, willing to wrestle a five-minute match, willing to cut a promo before the show, willing to cut a promo in the ring. They're going to get the best Holden Albright possible. 
because my aspirations do not involve an office. My aspirations do not involve a salary. It does not involve a fucking central location. What I want to do is this. I want to create videos. I want to motivate people. I want to do stand-up comedy. My goal, and I'll fucking say it because now I need to will it into reality. My goal is to host some sort of variety show where there's like magic and musicians and jugglers. It's like basically a got talent show, but no competition. I just want to travel around Canada on CBC, CBC's Dime, and host a couple variety shows every weekend and maybe wrestle every now and then. Just remember, believe in yourself. You can do it. Nobody's better than you. We all just have different experiences. Once you start thinking you work harder than other people or people don't work as hard as you, you're putting yourself in a victim mentality. Maybe you don't think they work hard, but mental exhaustion and physical exhaustion are two different things. Does the bricklayer work harder than the guy that works in the office 60 hours? Does the lawyer work harder than the doctor? Does the fucking police officer work harder than the cleaners at the movie theater? Does the cleaners at the movie theater work harder than the police officer? No. You all just have your own shit. And at the end of the day, we're all just trying to survive. We're trying to pay our bills. We're trying to fucking feed our families. We're trying to make sure our fridge is full. We're trying to make sure we have clothes and our we have a roof over our head. So once you start comparing yourself to other people, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I, I've i totally... And I, there's a great... all. I did 12 episodes of a podcast series called... Uh, the ABC podcast with my good friend and fucking mentor and like father figure, Anthony Kingdom James. He's back in fucking school now for like PR and shit. I can't wait till he's working with me, not for me, working with me. So I don't have to have all this stress on myself. But we talked, it was like a lot of creator insights and stuff. And if you're a creator, if you have a podcast, if you have videos, if you want to do comics, listen to us. Because he's 50 and I'm 30 and we're just talking about there's a lot of similarities in there. And... The difference between us is he has a fear of failure. He doesn't want to shit the bed and put his effort. So he has all these pots going. And I have the fear of success to where I don't do good is good enough to me. But it's not great. But I never abandon my ideas. I always update them every now and then. I was talking to my buddy Jimmy about it on Friday. So figuring out what you have that fear of failure or fear of success. Figure out what your flaws are. Figure out what your bad habits are. If you want to get healthier, you need to figure out that stuff. If you don't like traits in other people, make sure you don't have those fucking traits. And then at the end of the day, have fun. Don't be afraid to show your ass. Don't be afraid to look like a jackass. Like, legitimately, I heard this uh, phrase from a uh, comic or a entertainer from, um, from the UK. And it was, don't be afraid to look like a cunt. And because he's from the UK, cunt isn't that bad of a word. But it is, don't be afraid to like sh look like a jackass. And that's the clown that's falling over and getting laughs. That's a stand-up comedian. Two biggest fears in life. Being buried alive and public speaking. Stand-up comedians do public speaking. So I hope you took something away with this. It was very motivating for me. I didn't realize how angry and passionate I was. Uh, next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a detail on my, um, on my what's it called, um, what my goals are for the next 12 months. Also, I want to put some questions at the end of these car talks. So comment down below a question of something I say or a motivation or a mindset thing. Uh, not so much Brendan Caulfield, like, what's your favorite color, shit like that. Like, literally, engage with me. I want this to spark conversations. I know this sparks motivation, but I want it to spark conversations. Comment down below. And off that note, remember, all the links are down below. Holden Albright, Brendan Caulfield on things. You know that deal. Thank you so much. Subscribe. Whatever. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Just have fun. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Have a good one, everybody.